Uh, greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to our Africa for the Africans uh, Tours uh, Conference Call. Today's date is November 10th, uh, 2019, and uh, we're getting ready to leave for our South Africa journey in 12 days and leave for our Ghana journey in uh, 44 days. What I want to do is organize this conference call. This is our 13th year doing this Africa for the Africans Tours and look into this uh, expand and offer this uh, nice variety of um, this wonderful tour itineraries to connect you to an incredible experience. So tonight's uh, main focus, what I want to do is go over the uh, departure minor list uh, of everything for South Africa tour in November 2019 slash the December 2019 Ghana tour. Uh, so everyone who has is in, in front of the computer. The information was sent via uh, email. And also, um, when you go to our website, Africa for the Africans.org, you can click on any of the tours uh, that we have set up on the uh, main menu. And when you open it up and uh, you scroll all the way down, you'll see the yeah, departure and reminder list. Even with the different tours, they all sequence the same uh, 1 to 30. Yeah, so when you go over one, you can go over um, go over the same ones for all the countries and go over the difference. So that's what we're looking to do. Uh, but beyond that, uh, information uh, was sent out for the conference call. It's a Mailchimp email. Now in that email, it usually lists uh, one to twenty different uh, things that we've talked about. But when you look through the list, it's really a lot of information. We've never been able to talk about any of it on one call. Um, but um, over a period of just doing doing three or four calls, we'd have covered all those details, and then we just keep on doing the same. So we end up going over a lot of the same information about uh, two to four times, or I should say three to four times throughout the year, uh, b based on just going over the same documentation. And that's for for basically a lot of new people. And then when we come in close to tours, the goal is to give certain updates. All right, and to uh, flow with updates, what I want to do is I'm going to go to our website, Africa for the Africans.org. But the website is set up for 100% direct all of your tour details. Uh, so as soon as you get to the website, um, you'll see MP3 play on the left. Um, it's a flash base, so you have to enable flash. And the same thing with the slideshow. Uh, if you don't, then you'll, you won't see anything. But even nevertheless, uh, when you scroll down, uh, the main thing is to go to the main menu and you'll see all of our tours and when you click on any of the tours you see all of the tour details. As I was talking about the preparation departure list, uh, literally uh, you'll see it, I have it set usually for the last uh, article on each of the tours. The website is a setup to where if you want to make a credit card payment, if you want to register, look at some uh, general information about investments or repatriation is there. Uh, other repatriation and investment information would be information we're going to put up about our Ghana community once we get things uh, going. Uh, other than that, we also have uh, a way that you can order an investment guide and also uh, any tour supplies for those who just want to just order any of those things. I've gotten a lot of requests over the years, and I usually tell people we don't have enough orders to have those things available. But since we have so many tours, you can order supplies a little bigger. Do have additional supplies for if your family or friends or anyone just want any of the, the Africa for the Africans uh, uh, branded um, uh, tour material that we, that we give to all of the tour members when they travel with us, which is a tour t-shirt, two pens, a tour bag, and also a tour book. So when you see the thing that say online store to order investment guides, Africa tour supplies and souvenirs on the main menu, that's all that is, and it's a shopping cart set up uh, that I have organized through our PayPal. The tour that I want to talk about um, is uh, Senegal and the Gambia, Roots Tour, that's April 2020, and the goal is to do the same journey for April 2021. And that's the third uh, tour that I have uh, set up. Just looking to do Senegal and the Gambia, Ghana, and South Africa. We'll see about the future, but uh, I feel good about those countries. Those countries are the countries that I have the most experience with in and the best connections and then I feel like the program that we can set up as far as itinerary, it will give you know, those of us in African diaspora 
a nice uh, experience to reconnect to the, the roots culture and then link with business investments and you know, opening your mind to a world of this African continent. So these uh, journeys are set for great introduction on African continent, you know, of 50 something countries. Uh, so, you know, people ask me how you select uh, certain countries. Most of the countries are selected are based on relevance to our connection as people living in the African diaspora. Uh, so things like uh, stolen African ancestors, things like uh, repatriation energy, or just you know, those things, all those things make a difference. Uh, so that's the significant difference between the, the four countries I mentioned and then any other country that we have not been to or, you know, and then being able to communicate and have people that can help us with the communication and then those things make a big difference. So let me start off with um, the Senegal and the Gambia. Now that tour is set for April 3rd to the 13th. So we leave on April 3rd and get back on the 13th. And it's broken down where we spend five days in Senegal and then three days in the Gambia. So once we leave, for, leave from Senegal, we're going to drive to the Gambia, and it's about a five-hour drive. Senegal consists of three actual tour days where you're going out, a uh, full day out. Then for, for us, that's like leaving in the morning, usually around 9 o'clock, and getting back between 3 to 5. And that's a full, you know, full day. Gambia is set for two uh, uh, incredible cultural days. On the website, uh, without going through much of what we have gone through in the last um, few conference calls, first article you'll see is the tour overview. So that gives you price, uh, what's including uh, all of the different um, highlights of all of the tour, all of the tours, and the two different country breakdown. And that's just designed us to give you this, get right to the point to let you see some numbers and some details right away. Uh, from there on, in the, um, the next article is the full day-to-day -day itinerary where you're going to see dates, times, and everything, including the flight schedule. And talking about the flight schedule, the flight schedule is set to leave from Atlanta or uh, New York JFK. And, and other people that are coming from other places, the, our goal is to do the best to get you a direct flight to um, Paris, France. So the flight leaves from wherever you are directly to Paris, France. If we can't get you a direct flight, then we have to get you a double connection. Uh, example, if you're in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, there's no direct flight, so your flight would either go to JFK, New York, or Atlanta. Uh, so, and that was the best flight uh, segment that we could arrange. Um, I did a group booking for about 17 uh, tickets, uh, 10 from Atlanta, 5 from JFK, New York, and then 2 from Chicago. And, and that's just based on people's gen uh, general interest. And the group booking is important uh, because that's the best way we can do a group contract to where we lock down certain flights and pay a certain percentage of the money for the flight and then pay the balance off anywhere from 60 to 30 days before we leave. And then we can always add flights and take away flights. And you know, it gives you a nice management system to manage a group of people that want to travel and make accommodations uh, work for everyone together. And so, so what I explain to everyone who is interested in traveling with us on any tour, just let us know up front. And the best way to let us know up front is to make a deposit. And once you make a deposit, we automatically secure tickets uh, for your route if we don't have it secured already, um, if it's not one of the pre-secured tickets. Then get everything going. Uh, the goal is to never do any of this at the last minute. Uh, so that's why everything is uh, typed up nice and organized and neat on the site. And for those who speak uh, more native language in Spanish or French, you know, you can always just language translate. But one want to make sure that everything is in the written word. Uh, below the uh, itinerary is the general terms. And the general terms just give you clarity about uh, cancellation and refund policies, uh, deposits and things like that, and uh, who's responsible uh, in the journey. And they also give you the confirmed numbers. And below that, uh, you have the visa requirements um, process for the Gambia. For Senegal, you don't need a visa. Once you click on that, it gives you the full detail. Then we have the departure reminder list and then improving your immune system. That's what we have for um, Senegal and the Gambia. Right now, we only have a few people and we still have room uh, for those who are looking to join us. And there is still a $200 discount for those who secure a deposit uh, uh, this month.
Anyone that's interested in joining us uh, in Senegal, uh, click on the link and just check out all the details, process it. You can reach out to me and we can talk and go over everything, make sure that you're clear and everything. But uh, these are some of the real nice itineraries that we have, this uh, incredible accommodations. And it's just uh, looking at this to uh, make, you know, the, now this is a shorter journey, uh, so it's, you, know, you have a lot more flexibility to, to do certain things. So family, uh, that is uh, all of the information for the Senegal and the Gambia Root Store. April 3rd to the 13th of 2020 and we still have time to get some more deposits so let's get that journey going and, uh, and keep the energy strong. All right the next uh, journey I want to talk about is a South Africa tour and that's set for November 2019 and November 2020. Updates I have for uh, South Africa I'm going to go over the uh, last update that I sent everyone, which is just a confirmation of lodging, preparation lists, departure, meeting, and the tour company that we use in. Our journey is set for um, leaving November 22nd to South Africa, and our return is December 2nd, as far as us getting back to the U.S. And so that current journey right now and uh, the finalized list, um, we're 13 strong, and that's a nice uh, small group. Um, literally, this is my third time going to South Africa. Last two times was in 2005, May and November. And I wasn't really feeling South Africa then because of a lot of the crazy stuff that was going on then as far as this, the after effects or aftermath of apartheid. But uh, nevertheless, uh, a lot of wonderful things have been going on in South Africa, and we have some good partnerships uh, there. Um, and so it's, um, it was a perfect opportunity to set up a nice itinerary for the country I'm familiar with, uh, mainly J Johannesburg and uh, Cape Town. I've, n I've never been to Pilanesburg or I've been to any, any type of um, safari. So that's the one of those interesting things that we plan on taking as much pictures and videos as possible and share, especially for the people looking to travel with us. Uh. All right, so on that journey, uh, what we have set up is... Uh, for those of us who are leaving from Atlanta, uh, we're going to be meeting up at uh, 4 o'clock at the departure gate at the Atlanta International Terminal, and the flight goes directly to South Africa. Um, so the meetup time will give us between 4 to 5 just to connect and just have our group together to leave out. Uh, the flight leaves at 6.25, and then we arrive the next day in Johannesburg, and that's going to be 4.40 p.m. Uh, so I have our private arrangements to pick up our group, and then we'll head to the airport and then unfortunately since uh, we couldn't get any additional flights to leave from Atlanta we have six of us are leaving from Atlanta and then we have seven people uh, leaving from Amsterdam so what I have in the notes is that uh, if you're flying on KLM uh, going to Amsterdam to South Africa on the next day which is November 23rd we have a group meetup at 8.30 a.m. at Amsterdam um, airport uh, departure gate and the flight is set to leave at 10:15 uh, a.m. and it arrived at 10:05 p.m. later on that day. We'll be sending messages in the group uh, WhatsApp um, to coordinate um, both energy and and update everyone with the transportation for airport pickup. Now the tour company that we're using, uh, it's a good friend of mine that used to work at the airlines with me and. Uh, he moved to South Africa and retired and moved to South Africa. So uh, he set up a wonderful company called Balanta Tours. Uh, so you s it's uh, balantatours.com. So once you click on it, uh, you see the different tours that they offer. Uh, he's, a, you know, he's a brother, a black man. Um, uh, his website is a little more, I guess it's probably a little more universal because in South Africa they probably do tours for just many different people. Uh, so, but. Um, uh, he doesn't have much of his direct information and pictures on there, uh, but you know everybody do their marketing and business and things different. Uh, me, I just I try to put up all of our documentation, pictures, videos, just right in your face, so you can see how we look, how we move, how we operate, and who we are, and what, you know, and what kind of energy that you know we're flowing with. And so while we're in South Africa, set for three uh, days in Johannesburg, uh, as far as tours, we there for five days. Uh, one tour would be Soweto, one would be Johannesburg, and one would be Pilanesburg while we're staying in Johannesburg. Uh, so we'll just, you know, we'll be in Johannesburg the whole time, but, and we'll just, you know, move out, move out to where we need to move out to via 
our tour company bus. Uh, when you're in uh, Cape Town, uh, we're there for three days, but uh, two days we just have the tours out. Uh, so as you can see, these itineraries, uh, a lot of times I'm set up for three to five days wherever we go. That way, whatever city you go to, you at least have you know, three days of just being there without you having to unpack the next day or so on. So as far as uh, South Africa also, I sent everyone their paid in full Delta Airlines uh, electronic ticket, and that's how we do tickets uh, nowadays. Uh, everything is just electronic, so you're able to get it out faster, and uh, you can access your booking to where you can add um, you can add meals, you can upgrade, you can change seats, and things like that. So hopefully uh, everyone has selected the seats and everything that they need to select. That way, you know, you can be ahead of the game. But beyond that, um, other preparations, what we're going to talk about after this talk quickly about Ghana is that uh, departure and reminder list. That's the other thing that was you know, on that email uh, as an attachment. Beyond that, the hotels that we're going to stay at, the first one is uh, Tia Hotel, Johannesburg, Partonian, and it's an all-suite hotel. And judging by the Marriott name, Marriott is either taken over that uh, hotel chain or has invested, but everything uh, that we reserved was to uh, Marriott.com uh, as far as our, our lodging. Uh, the other one uh, is uh, Portia Hotel Cape Town Waterfront uh, Breakwater Lodge. Uh, this, is the, this was the original hotel I was trying to get for us, uh, and then there was some kind of <laughs> reservation drama, and I ended up using the Mowbray, but then ended up figuring out how to fix the issue and end up um, just getting this one back and doing the advanced booking. Um, which so, uh, so that is all set. Uh, put all of our names and roommates and everything all set up in the system. So looks good. A little bit different, but uh, it's give me a chance to do all those things ahead of time, which is what I've been focusing on: is working on the Ghana and South Africa tour back to back, and just getting everything done ahead of time as much as possible. So that email I sent everyone to travel with us to South Africa is to let you know that all those things are confirmed. And then I sent another email, which was our, our domestic flight that goes from Johannesburg to Cape Town on November 28th. And then we returned to Johannesburg from Cape Town on December 1st. So that's all set up for Mango Airlines. And with Mango Airlines, all you have to do is just click on the link uh, to manage booking. You put in the confirmation number, you put in your date of birth, and it gives you access to your booking. So those are the uh, updates for that journey. 13 of us um, looking to this uh, enjoy a wonderful experience. So I uh, do my best to record everything as much as possible and upload it as much as I can and share with everyone. And as we begin this to expand and offer some wonderful, a collection of wonderful countries for different people and, and who are looking to experience Africa. All right, so family, that is um, South Africa and we have a nice little start for November 2020 so I hope everyone that's traveling with us next year is doing the same thing just checking everything out and just going with the flow of things and be, that way you'll be more prepared for uh, next year. The last tour that we're going to talk about um, is the Ghana December 2019 journey and we also set for May 2020 and in Ghana December 2020 which I'll be working on once I get back from South Africa. All right, so uh, we've talked about um, Senegal and the Gambia and South Africa. Now, as far as uh, these uh, Ghana tours that I mentioned, um, coming up uh, in Ghana in December, the same thing, uh, all the flights have been paid for. And uh, we're just waiting for that day to come December 24th to leave for Ghana. So uh, the sequence of our, of our setup is the same exact thing once you're on the... The website, you just click on the link and uh, check out the tour overview, general terms, itinerary, visa details, and since we're leaving in, you know, in less than two months, uh, for those who don't have your visa, you don't have to rush it, but you definitely want to make sure that you process and put in your visa, and it's one of those things where I'm on standby to talk to anyone about uh, you know, the, you know, anything, especially things like visa. And the main thing about when we send out paperwork or details about those things, you just have to print it out, go to it, jot your questions down, and let's talk about it. 
a lot of times um, people uh, just rush through those things and then they have a lot of questions. But the main thing I want everyone to know, all these files on here are files set to make sure that it answers all of your questions and gives full clarity for the journey, um, if you, especially if you go through all of them. Uh, it answers almost everything that you have and then you know, it makes it easier for us to talk and be clear about things. We're all ready to leave December 24th and uh, uh, all of our flights connect to Amsterdam so all of us are coming from many different places uh, so just make sure that you're clear about your flight departure and realize that uh, the flight itinerary is just a schedule uh, but your flight schedule is the schedule that you need to follow uh, so you oh, you always see us leaving from Atlanta to like Amsterdam uh, but the connecting point is usually when we meet the next day in Amsterdam where all of us uh, literally connect. That's our common flight. And uh, Ghana things are just a little simple as far as our pickup. Uh, we're right there about uh, 15 minutes away from the Micklin Hotel. Uh, so, and then our tour bus company, Sun Seekers Tours, uh, that's usually just come get us along with the folks in the hotel. Uh, since there's so many of us and most of these journeys, uh, it's usually 30 to 40 of us. Uh, but this uh, journey, um, it is uh, 27 of us. So I should say most of the journeys we have to Ghana is 20 to 40. Uh, so 27 nice, wonderful uh, group. Um, and I just didn't know how people would feel about wanting to leave during certain times in the holidays. But this schedule ended up being a good time for us to leave. We just have to make sure that we arrange for flights ahead of time. Because just like the um, South Africa situation, a lot of flights were filled up. And you just had to be creative, so I ended up having to change the date. So that's how we end up with a date of December 24th to uh, January 4th. And then some people who came on later add to this, just work things out to where they can stay longer. But uh, you definitely always want to just reach out to me ahead of time if you're looking to travel, especially on any holiday schedule, because the most important thing for me to do and the simplest thing for me to also do is to lock in flight reservations, because as soon as 11 months before any trip comes, I'm on the phone with uh, Delta Group Booking and we're setting up a group booking contract to where we can just add to. But note that um, the closer you get to leaving, uh, the more f you know, flights go up and everything and you may be subjected to, you know, to late charges and things like that. Usually we work those things out, but you know, that's the setup. You know, that's why I'm explaining to everyone to communicate. And then if you're not looking to travel with us or something come up or you change your mind, let me know ahead of time so I can save as much of your payment or your money as, as best as possible and put you on another journey or just try to work, you know, work something out for you. Um, unfortunate things uh, come up and, you know, I, you know, I, I understand, uh, but uh, we just need to communicate so we can make it work out. Uh, sometimes you're trying to communicate with someone and, and things are going on, but, you know, with me, it's, it's simple to just reply back to the email or whatever the and then say, hey, this is going on. Uh, so the main thing is just keep good communication. That way we can be clear about these things because a lot of reservations and things have to be put together. Uh, and that's what I spend most of my time throughout the week uh, working on. All right, so um, on these uh, wonderful uh, journeys uh, to Ghana, unlike the two other um, tours that I just mentioned, this tour is not set for a three- and four-star hotel like the other tours. Um, what we have is a Micklin Hotel in Accra, two-star hotel in Micklin Hotel and Kumasi, three-star hotels. I've been using them for the, since uh, 2011, and it has been a wonderful experience. Uh, it's a perfect situation because we're in a nice neighborhood uh, where we can walk and move around and where we have access to all the things we need to do for nightlife and like about four different ways to get out the neighborhood, to move around, to go to different parts of uh, in a, outside of Accra that we need to go to while we're on tour. Uh, so, logistically, uh, those things are perfect, and then, like I said, the hotel's a nice uh, local feel, um, and nice and accommodating as, uh, you know, we can get uh, both hotels or business hotels. But nevertheless, this is like our best itinerary and the best setup that we have for anyone to enjoy an introduction into Africa. Um, and that's why we kind of just add certain hotels to the other tours, because it doesn't have the level of cultural balance as it is. Ghana is one of the most this incredible cultural country, especially like you go up to Kumasi, you go into craft villages in the culture center, um, and you know, 
and there's so much of our history that's just connected. So um, when everyone, anyone is you know, asking about uh, interest in any of the tours, all of them that you know, you know what I, you know what I rec recommend based on what they're looking for. But you know, you really have to read that itinerary just to get a good feel. And then you know you may have to do some additional research, and that's why I do videos of all of the tour sites. That way you can see what we're doing, as we, whether we're at the Holocaust Dungeons or Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, and so on. And family, um, the, the document that we're going to review uh, is the departure reminder list. So that's also right here on this one. What I just went over, our family was this uh, overview and updates for all of our tours that we have uh, scheduled for this year and next year. So I want to know if anyone has any questions about anything that I've talked about, just uh, press star six to unmute yourself and I'll answer your question. And then beyond that, what I'm going to do is just go over this preparation list. It will take me about 15 to 20 minutes to go over. Take some uh, questions and then we'll just close the call. So family, line is open, uh, star six uh, for questions and uh, in reference to the things that we uh, talk about as far as um, all of the updated or uh, upcoming tour schedule. Diane Dandridge. Uh, greetings, uh, Diane. Uh, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm uh, doing well. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. I just got, I'm getting a little nervous. I want to make sure I got everything right. I have a question. When I went to check my account to get my seat, it, you know, Delta wouldn't let me do it. I had to go to the KLM site yes. to do that, but I didn't see where to deal with food. Was there a place in there for me to check meals on, for the flight? Because I didn't see it. In KLM, uh, yes, it is. Uh, you can add meals and things like that. In a situation like that, the best thing to do is to physically just call me and or send me a message and saying, uh, can you help me find this? And then I can just usually just send you a message saying this is where it's at. Or when you call me to say, I'm in front of your booking, um, look here, and you, then you'll find it. But um, yeah, Delta and KLM system are set up different as far as those things. But um, you know, it's one of those things you have to just take your time and look through the page. Uh, but if you're not familiar with it, it sometimes it's not easy to find. All right, and one more thing. So anything that I have, hair products, lotions, anything that is in the check-in doesn't have to meet that three-ounce requirement? Exactly. Um, check. Exactly, that's, and that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that, um, um, you know, the things that you have that, uh, you know, anything that you can put in your check bag, that's, I always just recommend check, put everything in your check bag. But yeah, you don't have to worry about the three ounce situation with your check bag. And it says, you said to have a lock and key. Last time I had a lock and key on, and it was a domestic flight, they cut it off. So we can lock our stuff. Uh, yes, you can lock your bag. I always lock mine. Uh, they have to cut it off. They have to do it. They have to do um, based on whatever they, you know, see that, you know, they find in the scan, which, you know, but uh, for the most part, um, I don't recall in the, having any of my locks are uh, cut uh, in the international travel in the last 13 years. Okay. Yeah, this was domestic, so I don't know. Oh, and um, someone asked a question on the, on the uh, WhatsApp, which was a good thing for me because we're going to go to the Kunta Cloth factory, right? And is there going to be time to have something made if we're at, if we get to, I don't know where the time we are at the factory, fabric place and when we can find someone to do it to be able to pick it up before we go is that uh yes it's a we're doing a sim simple triangle movement around the country uh so um when you get there you just order what you want and we work we work out arrangements um okay. so that's uh something something that um uh you know we're having uh, direct conversations when we get there about who wants what and so on because that's our goal is to make sure that whatever you want to do or whatever you want to get done we talk about it right away and we have you know, different people that we put on the job to help you get certain things done. Um, okay. So we have, um, have a few uh, people available that's going to be able to talk about that like directly the first day when we get there. Um, well, not first day, the second day, which is December 26th. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, appreciate it. It's, you, so excellent. So you read through all of the document. That's wonderful. 
did read it. I, you know I print my stuff off. I can't read on the screen. <laughs> uh, perfect. All right, uh, hold on for a few seconds. So, Diane, uh, was, was that it? Uh, did that answer your question? Yes. I right. appreciate you, so let me put you back on mute. All right, perfect. Uh, greetings, brother. How are you? Good. Yeah, this is Warren. Um, on the South Africa trips, do we get two two fifty pound bags or one fifty pound bags? Yeah, the South Africa trip that is a little tricky. Uh, what I did put is, is a link in it so everyone can click on it and look at South Africa baggage situation. So if they do, so it boils down to this: if um, the, basically what I've read and um, and still, still trying to process it is that you can bring multiple bags for check-in. Is that they can be over 20 kg. So um, um, I might not be able to do much about that for myself. So I'm the, so I looked at the chart of what they are charging and it's minimum. So um, I plan on just paying for the extra few pounds because 20 kg. I, I don't have it, uh, and it's my fault. I should have just calculated it to pounds. Uh, usually uh, we get up to 20, 23 or 26 kg, so I'm thinking that that's probably related to more 40, 45 pounds. Uh, so um, all of us just have to be prepared to pay extra and things like that, but definitely make sure that you read through their baggage, uh, baggage setup. It's one of those things where all the trips that we do is usually set for like international back booking, but whenever we have something domestic, we just have to deal with the domestic adjustment, which is usually in most countries you only allowed one bag, but I looked at it over and over and it didn't mention anything about bag. So one thing I'm going to do is reach out to our group representation that did all of our bookings, the group department, and I'll see if they can work something out in the system based on our international flights because all of us are going to have our bags set for 50 pounds. Okay. So hopefully that, that makes sense and hopefully I didn't... i to look at the wording. Now, oh, for the domestic one, is that the same? You think it's going to be the same for the from U.S. to Johannesburg, and then in 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 country, you think it'll be the same regulations or different? And that's what I'm saying to you. The preparation list I have here. Um, and let me see if I can find it. Let me just uh, the preparation list I sent to you guys. Um, let me just go directly to this. Uh, on number eight, I'll give you a link to, that go to Fly Mango. So only thing I'm explaining to everyone is that. When we do these domestic bookings, there's not much we can do. When you, if you get to the counter and they want to charge you for extra bag and things like that, you just have to deal with it. But at the same time, too, we're letting you know this is the airline we're flying on, and it's up to you to read through it for clarity. We can definitely talk more about it in, in our group communication and everything, but their regulation is clearly different from Delta, so that's why I provided the link. But Delta and Kalem is two 50-pound check bags, and two check bags, but it's just going to be lower weight. It's 20 kg. Uh, as yeah. that is what I remember. So the only thing I'm explaining to you is that you just have to pay a little bit extra for the weight or you can adjust your bag weight. But you know, for you and everyone else, just click on it and check it out, make your arrangements. And then ultimately, w the thing that we would, we'll do when we're in uh, Johannesburg is we'll say, hey, we're getting ready for the, to leave for the airport the next day. Uh, the baggage situation is going to be a little bit different. Just make sure that we take out some of our weight out of our check bags and put it in our carry-on bags. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I just, yeah, I'll do all the research. Yep. And perfect. Uh, so got you guys all set. All right, so let me see if there's anybody else. Okay. My question is concerning the shot. Um, I've seen websites where they say they're required. I've seen websites where the yellow fever is not required. When we discussed it, I think it was in August, you said that uh, people have gone without it. So I'm wondering, has that really changed uh, or not? Uh, no, it's not changed. And uh, to answer your question directly, 50% uh, of people who travel with me, they get the yellow fever shot and 50% of them don't. Um, and as per, you know, I'm one of the people that have to look through all the legal stuff of a country. Um, per everything that I've looked at uh, for the country, uh, nothing is in writing based on the Ghana government or Ghana embassy or, or, or people in power of the country to say that if we don't have a yellow fever shot, they won't let us into the country. So until we're told that they won't let you into the country without yellow fever, we can't say yellow fever is mandatory. Uh, and then we have to just go by our boosting your immune system uh, document that's on and all of the tour links. 
uh, to this. Right. We recommend individuals just do the best they can do in a more natural way to boost their immune system. But you know, anyone who wants to take drugs or get or or take any of these medicine, which none of us know what's in, it's up to them, uh, and nothing we can really do. So what I usually recommend is that individuals talk to their doctor. But to answer mm -hmm. your question, yellow fever is not mandatory. And anyone who feels that it's mandatory, please, so we can all educate ourselves, because I've not been able to get anyone to provide those documents to date. Oh. Okay. I Thank you. I appreciate that. I just want to make sure that that was still in fact. Oh, yeah, and then you're going to be with, all of us are going to be together. It's going to be like 20-something of us, and we just, we're coming through. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. You're welcome. All right, so if anyone else have any questions before? Lamani, I do. This is Mitrell. Uh, greetings, uh, Mitrell. Yeah, I just wanted to know, so there are days on the itinerary in Ghana that says that we can do some things on our own. I was just wondering, the people that you have in place, if, if we have specific places that we wanted to go, should we present that to them when we get there, or should we be making arrangements prior to getting there? Uh, you can make any kind of arrangements you're looking to make, but um, the tour is a full schedule. Um, if you don't want to come out with us one day and you want to do something else, you know, you know, we don't have any issue with that. We do our best to make sure that you're safe and you're connected with somebody good. Uh, but, yeah, it's, um, and then you're staying there longer, so you can work out arrangements uh, based on meeting all of the people that we have that you can meet. That way you can plan out your additional arrangements even better. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So I'm, I need to read the itinerary again, though, because I thought it was some, some optional time. But if it's not, if it's full, that's fine. I'll just do all the tour activities. That's fine. Yeah, the, yeah, and the thing of it is, um, uh, yeah, the schedules are a little different now, but um, we just encourage people if they want to do something different, they do it different. But um, we have to, we're limited on days. We can't really offer free, open days where we just have the bus sitting there because when we pay for the bus, they want us to pay for it the whole time. They don't want to, you know, so it's one of those things they don't want us to pay for it today and then not pay for it tomorrow and things like that. Uh, so end up being a schedule where we just work that way. But I also recommend people stay longer, which is for those who are coming in the future, you can definitely do that. And for those who are still coming with us in December, we may be able to do that. And the cost may be a little bit more for some people uh, to change your ticket uh, right now instead of later. And if there's certain things you definitely want to do and you want to make work it out and arrange it ahead of time, you can always just email me and then you and I talk about it. Okay. All right. Well, perfect. All right. So um, if you don't have any more questions, what I'm going to do is just mute you and I'm going to go over this list and then get some more questions. Bomani is Zena. Uh, greetings, Zena. Um, when we take the Mango Line from Johannesburg to Cape Town. Are we coming back to Johannesburg? Can we leave some of our luggage there at Johannesburg? Unfortunately, I know we wouldn't be able to work that arrangement out. The airport is, um, sorry, the hotel is about 30 minutes away from the airport. But uh, when uh -huh. flights are, they're not that close, but we still have a few hours. But it's an uh, arrangement that will be hard to make. So the best thing we recommend everybody is just to bring all your stuff the whole time. Uh, if mm -hmm. I can get, if you know, while we're there, if we can get, the hotel to agree certain things and make certain arrangements based on if you just did a lot of shopping. We can definitely work that out. But we won't have time to go back to the hotel once we come back from um, Cape Town. And that's why we have to just work, work it out with someone that's going to agree um, to meet us at the airport and bring your stuff back. So the situation oh, okay. we just really need to do that for you. We'll just work it out and then you pay the person and then uh, the agreement uh -huh. is to be at a certain locations, and then we meet them at the airport. And that's the same thing that gotcha. you know, like we do in Ghana. If we have to just like the ladies are yeah. dresses, just have to just make yeah. arrangements and communicate, and we okay. just work it out. So you you plan on doing a lot of shopping? Uh, I don't know. I got to see what I see. <laughs> There's another country too that's just, just incredible with the shopping. Mm -hmm. Everywhere in Africa is like that because I haven't been everywhere, but. It's like all the countries I've been to is just the shopping and the things that you can get, the artifacts and things that are made in countries. Yeah. Incredible. And the prices is just, is the best. I know. I went overboard in Ghana, but I don't know. <laughs> all right. That's all I have to know. All right. Perfect. And then um, 
Uh, if you want to talk with me throughout the week for about your tour directly, you know, you can just always call me and we go through it. Uh, so I just always want to make sure that you have all your everything is good for the flights. I know the flight booking arrangements going on Delta and KLM is like sometimes crazy, but it's what we have to work with. And so this been trying to work it to where all of us can get used to using this system. Mm -hmm. once, once we get used to it, it's, you know, we see that it's not bad. Okay. All right, cool, perfect. But you're good on your flights, though, uh, Zena, from from. Yeah, Canada. everything is good with that. Yeah. All right, perfect. So my mother Joy will meet up with everyone, and I'm gonna talk with her and and just get everybody all organized uh, for for leaving from Amsterdam. Uh, it's one of the things I don't like how those things work out, but you know, after. But yeah, I'm this. gonna meet your mother at JFK, right? Uh, yes, you meet her at JFK, and then we have another person that's oh. going to be leaving from Cleveland to JFK, New York, and then we have two gotcha. from Chicago. We have two from Chicago and uh, one from Detroit. And they they all come into JFK. Oh, they all come into Amsterdam. All those flights are direct, with the exception of Cleveland. So I'll be okay. giving um, her a list of all of the people, their flight information, and then we'll be able to get it coordinated. And then we're all going to be on WhatsApp. So all the, you know, so, and this for our Ghana group also, you know, we'll be able to communicate the airport answer and you can say, hey, we're here, uh, we're getting on our flight, and I already know what your flight is coming, so I'll, I'll be there to pick you guys up since we get there. Oh, another question. Another question. Coming back, we're flying from um, Johannesburg back to Atlanta. Is there any way, I mean, to, uh, from um, yeah, to New York? Atlanta. Yeah, Yeah. Um, from Atlanta to back to JFK, but can I get that switch to um, Newark Airport? Uh, no. Newark Airport. You know, that's a good question now because that's... Um... Well, just let me know, you know, through the week. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, ticket, the ticket's already booked and paid for, so we have to just... I just have to talk to my folks in group booking and... And then, mm -hmm. what, you know, not sure what they're going to do, just give me some options. And then the same options they give me, I'll just let you know. And then if we can just work it out that simple, we'll just work it out for you. But thank you for letting me know now versus when we get to, you know, get to South Africa. Cause then it's, it's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Or they kick in the $300 change fee. So perfect. So uh, other than that, uh, you're set and uh, you like the itinerary? Uh, goal yeah, goal. fine. I'm, I'm, good. I'm good with the itinerary, yes. Oh, cool. All right, well, perfect. So let me mute you and go through this uh, list, um, and that way I don't keep all of us. Yeah, well, just check that out. If if you can, you can. If you can't, you know, just let me know either way. Oh, yeah, absolutely, I will. I got you on, uh, got you on my note list, uh, so I'll be able to get mm -hmm. back to you um, uh, between tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. All right, Domani. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, you're welcome. All right, so family, uh, we are getting set for the motherland. All right, so let me, uh, I got, everyone should be muted. All right, so family, uh, for those who have questions, just hold off uh, on your question, and let me just go through this uh, departure reminder list. I note that this is the same list that's on the uh, website and was sent via email, so. And the, the list I'm actually going to go through is a South Africa tour list, um, and the Ghana is very similar, and I'll point out the difference once we go through it. So number one, all of these uh, tour documentation is on our website right there in the main menu. Um, Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, and Ghana uh, tours. And you just click on the link, and once you click on the link, that's all the information. So that's what number one is talking about on the uh, departure minor list. Uh, two gratuities for all the tours that we have. What we do is we collect a $50, um, $50 per person, uh, it's uh, for group uh, tips, and that's what we use to add to, you know, what we are adding to take care of all the people that's basically going to take care of us there on any of the tours that we do. And number three, uh, do not come with a romanticized notion about Africa or you'll be disappointed and unnecessarily frustrated. Come with open eyes and an open mind, knowing that Africa, the continent, is have many developing nations and there's much to do and we can be a positive energy in the future of um, Africa. Uh, so we're Mothers of Africa's children returning to be a part of the growth and development. So just letting us know just to humble ourselves and just take in 
the full ten, the full eight to ten days that were you're in country and just enjoy it to the fullness. Uh, it's one of those things where you don't wake up every day. And you're in tr beautiful tropical Africa, where everything is set for. You know, everybody is there to cater to you to make sure that you're good, uh, and that's the main thing I want everybody to understand. So, it's one of those things where. You know, we, you know, we have to do things for ourselves, um, and you know, sometimes you know we work for decades, and you know, no one ever does anything special for us. So this is our special journey and connection to you, the journey of a lifetime on the motherland. So we just want you to be focused and enjoy it, and don't let things throw you off. Um, you now some countries are, and some parts of the individual countries we, we go to. You may, may see, see certain things like poverty, or you may see certain things that's just off. But the main thing is just for us to just focus and just appreciate what we see, and you know, like I said, just enjoy it to the, the fullness. Uh, um, all of us have paid a lot of money towards this uh, and energy, so definitely let's just make the best of it. Number four, all, all it talks about is the Delta slash KLM electronic tickets that I've talked about before. Uh, everyone gets their login um, between. Uh, uh, 30 to 60 days to access their flights and they get their receipt that shows their flights are paid in full. So you can log in, uh, change seats, add special services, add frequent flyer numbers, email address, emergency contacts, and more. Uh, print ticket and put with your passport. If you have any issues with accessing your ticket or see incorrect details on your flight itinerary or have any questions in general, please contact us as soon as possible. Note that this access to your ticket is only available 45 days before your flight departure. So um, anytime before that, your name is just in the system and the flight is not paid for because uh, it's just that process where we have to get the money from everybody to pay for the ticket in full. Everything has to be paid for at one time. Uh, so 60 days is the earliest, 45 is the medium, and 30 days is the latest that will go. Um, because um, you try not to push anything off too late. All right, number five, make sure you secure your personal documents, including passport and tickets. Uh, scan a copy of these documents, save on your email, and leave a copy with family, friends. Uh, these are the suggestions. Just make sure that you, you're clear on and have all your documents and everything organized and have a backup plan in case may, maybe you lose something or, or, and so on. But Email is a good way to access uh, things like that. Um, and uh, naturally, uh, all your flight bookings is in the system, so even if you lose your paper or forget certain things, when you get to the airport, all you have to do is just go to one of the machines and all your flight information per your, your legal name on your passport and date of birth is in the system. And that's how we collect that information uh, from everyone, just so we can just make sure everything matches up perfect. Uh, six, uh, please verify all travel documents and have them sec secure for travel dates. So the same thing uh, reiterating. Uh, number seven, um, arrive at airport two to three hours to give yourself enough time to check in and go through security and get on flight. Number eight, uh, check bags. Delta slash KLM allows uh, two check bags of a uh, 50 pound uh, limit each. So what you want to do is uh, you want to verify all labeling of your bag from your departure city to your final city. So if you're leaving from Atlanta, it'd be Atlanta to J and B for Johannesburg, South Africa. And, and you want to keep all your baggage receipts and everything that way. If there's a claim or issue, you have all your, your things together. All right, so Delta charges $100 for overweight bags from 51 to 70 pounds and then charges 200 for an extra bag. No bags are allowed over 70 pounds. Uh, put all liquids in your check bags and for Mango Airline baggage information click and view details on their website. So outside of Delta, KLM and Air France, um, uh, any domestic flight setup that we have, which this is the only country for now, uh, South Africa, um, want everyone to be clear on their baggage and then uh, once we, you know, the goal is so when we do another preparation list and things is just the type of what we have done with the Delta setup because what they have is very clear. Um, the way Mango Airlines have it is honestly is something I have to get used to processing. Uh, so um, 
All right, number 99, and uh, carry-on bags are simple. There's two carry-on bags, um, like a roll-on bag and a backpack or you know, things like that. Uh, there's two simple luggage that you can put in, a, in the overhead bin or you can put under the seat in front of you. Uh, number 10, when packing uh, luggage, remember that uh, less is better. You will want to purchase uh, clothing and other artifacts to bring back. So. You can do a sequence of just bring things that you're going to get rid of and then create more space and then you know, the extra baggage is always an option. Uh, on um, the list I have, uh, bring set up red, black, and green and uh, that's, um, none of this is uh, mandatory for South Africa and Ghana. We have some celebrations that we have. Um, so, but I ended up just putting that on there because I wanted to make our connection in Soweto and you know, the, the struggle of um, our people in, in apartheid, this bring the colors together. And, um, but I do have some Africa for Africans t-shirt that you know we can wear for those who want to do that. Uh, but uh, beyond that, um, it's just recommendation. Uh, so that's all I put was just the colors, because you know it's the colors of uh, logo and it's the colors of just m most African countries uh, flag. You know as you know, the red, black, green, and gold, some level of combination, whether it's two or all four colors. Uh, Twelve. Bring any uh, school supplies uh, to donate to the children. Uh, just any tour that we're doing, we do our best to just show some love to a school or orphanage, um, um, at least one or two. So uh, these supplies include books, bags, paper, pencil, calculator, clothing, just any basic things for school children or children who in an orphanage. Uh, Thirteen. Uh, now, for South Africa, we have our group meetup uh, November 22nd, uh, and that's at 4 p.m. in Atlanta. And then in Amsterdam, we have a group meetup uh, November 23rd at 8.30 uh, a.m. So it's just letting everyone know that the sequence of where all of us are going to be connected. Um, so that's all that's uh, telling everyone. And the main thing is just to go with the flow of your flight itinerary and then be available to meet up at the meetup points. Uh, 14, bring any necessary uh, medicine that you might need. Uh, 15, camera slash camcorder, bring extra film or memory card and rechargeable batteries. If you have electronics, bring a converter, a phone adapter, and an extension cord. Unlock iPhones or Samsung Galaxies um, for those who want to this, you know, while you're in South Africa or Ghana with us, if you just want to get a mobile SIM and just use the local phone service or just if that's something you want to do, if you, you have an unlocked phone, you can add the local SIM card to it. If you don't, then that's what this note is saying. Just bring an unlocked uh, phone, and the popular ones are these iPhones and Samsung Galaxy phones. If you buy, you know, buy them two, buy them two to four years out of when they came out, you get them for anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars, and maybe less. Travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bag, compact umbrella compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. Uh, so these are things you just need to be prepared for. 17, mosquito spray or repellent or centronella oil, which is an excellent insect repellent. Avoid wearing scented lotions or oil, mosquitoes like sweet scents. Note most of these sprays have dangerous chemicals, so do your research for the safest thing to use. And so Ghana is probably more of a mosquito uh, zone. Uh, maybe not so much South Africa, but nevertheless, when you're traveling to wherever, um, you know, I live here in, on the south side um, of Atlanta, and you know, it depends where you go. This mosquito drama. Uh, so, you know, these are the things that um, we just have on this a list of this travel, you know, travel items that are, you know, that you end up this, you know, it 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 helps you end up processing, you know, how to move and things like that. Uh, 18, uh, calculator for basic uh, things like currency exchange. Now, the currency exchange uh, for uh, South Africa is, for one U.S. dollar, it's 14.7 uh, czars or South Africa rand. Uh, for Ghana, one U.S. dollar is five uh, Ghana CDs. And for, um, Senegal, for Senegal, Senegal and Gambia, I literally have to just go and calculate those things, but 
I'll have those things. As a matter of fact, I'm sure I have it on the preparation list. It's just I don't have it up right now. Uh, but you know, one of the main things is uh, for those of us to be clear about the exchange rate, and you can just even just look it up online to be clear. That way, you, you have in your mindset already how the money works. Um, I have to deal with this a lot, and this sometimes sending you with a calculator because it depends on who you're doing business with. They're sending them, sending you the payments local and everything, and it's just then the currency uh, rate may change tomorrow and so on. But you know, nevertheless, this uh, give us clarity just to at least get an idea of the currency exchange. So please, everybody, just make sure that you take time out to be clear on these things. Uh, 19. Bring as much cash as you think you may need. We recommend like four to eight hundred dollars, and you can bring like a Visa card to access uh, ATMs. Mastercard is not as popular as Visa, but you can still bring those also. And the thing that we definitely recommend is to call your bank and then let them know that you're traveling internationally, and then you may use your debit or credit card or whatever cards that you have, and that will save you from a whole lot of drama. But if it does happen and you, you use your card once and then you can't use it again. No, no problem. What we do is just get your phone, you call your bank, use the international number, and you work things out. I've had to do that a few times uh, there in Ghana, just moving around, trying to take your business and pay using different methods. But it saves you a lot by doing that. And you know, you 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 basically just requesting to to put a travel alert on your you know on your card and you know with your bank and everything. So that's all a part of this mentality of us just being prepared. Uh, number 20, and family, what we're talking about is the departure and reminder list for all tours. And I'm using the South Africa one as a model, but I'm not, but I'm just making it universal with everything else that we speak about. So I'm going to go to the next uh, 10, and then we're going to open up for our questions for about uh, 5 to 10 minutes and then close. So hopefully everyone is following me on the list and have, or I've gone to it and have questions. Number 20, um, all the tours I've set up is for very tropical weather, you know, uh, mid-70s, 80 degrees, like, you know, your, your tropical Jamaica or South, um, you, know, you know, South Florida, that type, type of beautiful tropical energy. So the weather is going to be nice. The weather may not be so nice when you go to, you know, when you're in Amsterdam or, and, or wherever you may be, and it is cold, so know that. When you get on the plane, it's going to be cold, and then depends on what country it's going to be cold. Don't think the fact that you're just going to a tropical country that you're supposed to just, just warm the whole time. Uh, we don't want anybody to get there, and you get there, you're coughing, and you just, you know, you're, you know, you, the flu is coming up on you. So make sure that, um, you know, you, you, you know, you think about all those things and be comfortable and you know, have your sweater and your jacket and things like that um, ready for the cold flight. Uh, 21, no photo taken allowed at airports, state office building, and other government facilities. Your film will be confiscated and you could be arrested. So we do our best to just give you a heads up on this, especially when we drive around the bus because you know, I've been there before. We, the bus gets stopped because people are taking pictures at government officials or taking pictures of security or, or police or soldiers or whatever the situation may be. And it's embarrassing. They, they pull your bus over and then pull off whoever they think does it and we can't stop them from doing that. But we're not going to leave you. Uh, we would send our you know, best people, which is our tour guide and driver, which is they're the ones that know the country, and they'll talk and whatever tip that we have to arrange to get them to leave you alone, we just pay them and then we keep it moving. So the best thing to do is just avoid those things. And if you're in Ghana and you, you're taking pictures at the U.S. Embassy, even though I don't know what's the big deal to take pictures, but they will pull the bus over there and, and it, it'll be drama. So... Uh, just go with the flow of what, you know, we have a tour guide on all tours and they're there to tell you what's going on in their country. I'm there to organize and manage everything that we do as far as the tours and everything. Uh, so, you know, all these things help. Uh, 22, our tour does not offer um, travel insurance. Uh, so I have a link on, on the 22 that say PassportHealthUSA.com and there's other places, uh, but it's just not something that we have set up where we can just accommodate and make it work simple. Uh, 23, uh, toiletries, including toilet tissue, so, so feminine napkins, wet wipes, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towel, and laundry soap. So another you know, list of this things that you may need and may not need, but we're just putting on a list to put in your mind the things that you need. Uh, in Ghana, we're driving around. Sometimes we may be somewhere 
you know, maybe in the middle of, middle of, middle of a crime, Kumasi, and it's lack of arrest stops and things like that. And you may have to, you know, someone may have an emergency, we may have to pull the bus over, and you may have to handle your business out in the, the woods and everything. Uh, so that's why we mention those things. Uh, but for the most part, our goal is to stop by rest stops and, um, and also gas stations as we do long routes. Because uh, you know, none of the bus or vehicles that we have have bathrooms on board. 24, the, the people in the different countries are very friendly. Um, but one of the things I always have to let everyone know that, you know, especially when you're in a country like, like not like Singapore, like Ghana, but uh, Ghana and Senegal, and well, all the countries uh, that we have going, uh, let's be careful of the uh, slick people. Um, and and people just wanting to make promises to you that they can't keep and um, you know we're all in the country for a few days so any kind of business and arrangements you know we'd have to just make ahead of time uh, but when we go somewhere just be careful of people trying to sweet talk you to and you know, talking about marriage I love you and things like that it's just it's just a lot of this crazy things and I decided to just like really just start processing it like you go to a country and you know, people use certain techniques, uh, but just letting people know that, everyone know that there's things like that out there, you know. There's people there that, wherever you go, you know, whether it's the U.S. or wherever, but since we're talking about traveling to the African continent, I'm just, we let you know all the simple and basic and, and advanced things. And one of them is just be careful of sick people who want to talk about marrying you, want to get with you, want to be your friend, want to do business with you, or whatever the situation is. Um, I'm all about networking, and but I also believe that people should focus on getting to know the people that they're dealing with and don't just make quick decisions. Uh, so 25, uh, games for leisure time, including social gathering or just you know, things, you know, sometimes you out in the lobby or people may be in each other's rooms and you know, these things are always good cards, dominoes, chess, and general board games. 26, emergency items, flashlight, basic first aid kits, laxative, Pepto-Bismol, and then there's a few other medicine on here, and I don't bring any of these things because I don't, you know. But I'm just putting them out there for people because different people have different situations in health and wellness and things like that. So again, just process the things that you need to bring that you know, based on you knowing yourself or you being prepared, or you being in prevention mode. Uh, 27, please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by others or get caught up in complaining. This is an experience that will have its ups and downs as a part of your experience and introduction to Africa. We recommend you go with the flow and enjoy your time in paradise around the wonderful itinerary that we have put together on this journey for a lifetime. Uh, 28, uh, remember to have your yellow fever card or waiver presented to the point of entry in Ghana before you get there. And that's for those who want to take it. Um, and it's a situation where, you know, just putting that there because if you if you already have the the yellow fever and then you have the waiver, that's what you have to do. Present at the point of entry. But if you don't, you just that's if it's asked for. But then if it's asked for, you know, you, you know, you don't have it, and then you're allowed to move through. So every year I try to monitor this, and I can't remember having an issue with. Uh, us going to, um, but I've, we have, out of the 16 times I've been there, I think I've been asked like three times for a yellow fever card, um, and it's not consistent you know, for me to say, people, hey, family, spend four or five hundred dollars on a vaccination when you probably should be more worried about malaria and things like that. Uh, so anyway, family, that's a lot to process, and the conversations are uh, always interested when it comes to yellow fever and vaccination for traveling to Africa. 29, uh, when you get to our baggage claim, um, just get your cart and put your stuff on your cart and then the goal is, you know, we're moving in the group, so the goal is to make sure when all of us are in baggage claim to make sure all of us have our bags and everything is good. If there's, if there's a situation where one of us don't have our bags and, and things like that, we we'll do our best to look for it and file a report and then will get the bag uh, picked up for you and find out what happened to it. Uh, something that almost never happens. Uh, last time I remember that really happening was uh, December of 2006. Um, and um, you know, you had one person got their bag the day later and another person got it uh, two days later. But 
at the end of the day, um, it's I wouldn't blame it on them. Uh, but you know, we, you know, but it's like we have to just make sure that uh, when we check in our bags, we follow what we tell everyone. But I did, I do remember us checking our bags, and people went to different parts of the check-in location. But you always go to the international, you know, desk when you're dealing with um, international flights. And the airport is a little simpler now where those mistakes, I guess, they don't make anymore. So, you know, so it's been great with our bags uh, over the last uh, 10 straight years. Um, so, but just letting everyone know that we have to take accountability for making sure our stuff is set up and make sure that the bags are labeled properly. Uh, mistakes can happen with labeling of bags because it's, you know, it's a digital system which people can type in the wrong thing and mistakes can happen. So, Nevertheless, family, with that and everything else, just letting people know, that everyone know to take accountability. And the last thing is this. You may want to bring something special to connect um, to your ancestors, uh, whether you're at the Holocaust dungeons or whether you're at, you know, you're somewhere in, you know, whichever African country and you want to make it uh, a special moment. So that's all number 30 is talking about. So family, with that, uh, we are finished. Um, that, that nice long list as I find mistakes, typos, and things I need to add and adjust, we update and change it, and we keep it looking good on the uh, website. So family, uh, anyone have any questions, press star six to unmute yourself. Um, that's almost all of the information right here for, um, per verbatim, and hopefully it's enough preparation and clarity for everyone, and hopefully we didn't miss anything that we needed to put on the list. If so, we always ask for email and say, yeah, especially for those who have traveled and they think of unique things or things to just make sure people remember. But anyway, family, uh, star six it is to unmute yourself. All right, uh, can you give your name and where you're calling from? And I'm Mrs. Aida. Um, I'm right. going to be traveling from Chicago to Amsterdam and to Johannesburg. Hi, um, Queen Hi, Queen Hi. Um, just, um, you were saying something about the kilograms with I think the Mango Airline. So basically what you have to do is to convert it to pounds, whatever the kilograms is, I believe you said it was twenty, and multiply it by two point two and then it convert it to pounds. Yeah, exactly. So um I'm asking everyone to be clear on the domestic situation, um, since I was just putting a preparation list and it was the way they had it it was it was too much for me to to type on there because you know they're basing it on different weights but that's exactly what everyone has to do and it's a simple thing you just type in 20 kg in you know in google and it will give you the pounds uh but we all have to understand that the delta 50 pounds is going to be you know where most of us may pack up to that amount but when we get domestically we're going to have to think about a different game plan that's all saying that we'll have a nice little conversation of the packing of the bags and everything uh, at least a day before we go to Johannesburg um, Airport to go to Cape Town. Okay, so my other question was about the currency for South Africa. When we get to the airport, I am just assuming that there's a cur currency exchange in the airport. Is that correct? And if so, do you recommend that we exchange it there before we meet you? Uh, yes, anyone that could get money up front, whether it's in your bank or from the airport, get it. But beyond that, our uh, goal is to take it to a Forex bureau in South Africa. Um, based on what, based on people, money needs uh, every day or every other day. Oh, okay. So in the, in the airport in Johannesburg, would there be a currency exchange? Is that what you're saying? Oh yes, absolutely. There would be a currency exchange. But in general, once we leave the airport and we're you know on tour, the goal is to take it to a currency exchange every day or every other day. Because uh, and the same thing with ATM machines. Because different people, one person may want to do it today, one person may want to do it tomorrow, and so on. So we just I already put that in our mindset that we have to make sure we have access to those things every day on all tours. But, but definitely, you. if you can get money up front and you can get it for a better exchange rate and things like that, I would say go for it. I'm thinking about doing that myself. But Yeah, I was planning just to do it at the airport. Just to... But yes, my okay. sister, you're, 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 you're super excited. You're ready? You're ready? Um, I oh. am. Yes, I am. <laughs> Got everything, oh, everything's flowing good, yeah? And yes. I'm, Thank I'm you. Glad, I'm glad I adjusted it by removing those other countries because it just made it very hard to get people to come with us. Well, I wish you would have kept those other countries, to be honest. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is. 
It would have been me, you, and a few other people traveling. <laughs> that would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm hope. Uh, did, did you work out anything additional to you know, maybe uh, look looking to go into additional countries? And I didn't, but because you uh, added you during your tour in April, I joined that one, so I'm, I'll be okay. Oh, perfect! Yeah, actually, absolutely, and thank you for being uh, one of uh, the first two people. Uh, so. And okay. go to recruit sure. more people and everything, and especially when I get back from uh, South Africa, to just put a little more more work into it, so we can have a nice little small group, just like we have here for South Africa, right? Yeah, us, which is you know, cool. very good. I know people like it ain't, it's not the thirty or forty people you haven't gotten, but it's, it takes a while to develop these things. Yeah, it's, it's cool. All right, well, perfect. Well, well, I'm looking forward to meeting you in t meeting you well in thirteen days. Right, <laughs> countdown. <laughs> So was the preparation list helpful at all? Yes. All right, and it's, all those things are always a work in progress. The, the carry-on bag, does it have to be that really small one that you do domestically, just a little bit small? Is that the size? Um, yes, uh, the carry-on bags, um, uh, the, the, the size that you're looking at, um, and for the roll bags, they're, they're about usually those are about 20 to 21 inch upright, okay. and um, the duffel you know, duffel bags, uh, backpack, uh, things like that. Um, so what I use, I have a, I have a you know, 17 inch uh, laptop backpack, uh, big backpack, and a 20 inch uh, rolling bag, and that's my two carry-ons, and those fit perfect in the overhead, and then the uh, backpack fit perfect uh, under the seat in front of me. Right. Okay, good. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Jay, um, uh, which you, can you repeat, your, repeat what you're saying? I just heard you. Yeah. Oh, it's not me. Um, it's you said it's Yeah, I'm saying the call is unmuted. Um, I didn't know if you had a question. Uh, no, I'm taking right now. All right, cool. I'm going to send you the list of everybody that's going to be meeting with you in New York and uh, Amsterdam. Um, uh, so I'll be working on texting that information to you. But I, I'll send you a ticket and your receipt and everything um, so via email. And I'll send it to Sean also so he can help you if you need to access anything. But um, we're set for a domestic ticket. You don't have to do much. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you don't have to do anything. We all have the same confirmation, and it just shows all of our name on Mango Airlines. Right. I'm just figuring out um, about the the luggage for that airline. Yeah, and um, and I'm gonna literally go through with all of us um, um, more so on our WhatsApp call. But um, only thing I would say is that it's in it's in it's in kilogram it's in um, it's in the metric system, so kg you have to convert to pounds. And and you know there was something that I could have stopped and then type up and did, but I ended up just putting a link on there. But um, so it's like what you said, seventeen kilos. It's a uh, twenty. It should be twenty. I I, I looked at it uh, a few days ago and just went to it and just I did. I ended up just needing a link because it just okay. something I couldn't go through fully right then. But it basically is telling us that um, it's going to you know you're looking at less than fifty pounds. So okay. we're gonna we're gonna work out game plans and now we're gonna take out extra few pounds out of our uh, our check bags. And that's if all of us pack our bags up to fifty pounds before we leave and then we can just put it in our carry on bags and work it out. But that's all it's saying to you is that and what I realize is that you know, you can make you can make a re reservations where they give you a little bit more weight and so that's what I also saw. So that's the reason why I'm going to communicate with our folks in the group, um, our group working department. And, but if uh, they can carry multiple bags, what they got to be like 20 kilos. Exactly. Right? That's, that's exactly what it's saying. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, and, but then they also have something where for certain, depends if you just work it out ahead of time, you can get extra weight per your group. So that's something I found out recently. So I'm going to yeah. see... You know, so that's all saying it's one of those situations where uh, uh, once I find out from group booking, I'll share with us in our WhatsApp group as far as that, because that seems to be one of the, the, the big questions that all of us have 
include myself, the, the clarity of the weights for the domestic uh, setup. Right, yeah. I might be when you get there, they want you to pay, you know, a certain amount. Oh, yeah, they definitely want you to pay if the bags are overweight. Yeah. Not, not just like overweight, because some um, domestic flight, you have to pay for the luggage. Exactly. And the, and like carry on, yeah. Not carry on, but for your check-in bags. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it reminds me of uh, United Airlines because whenever we did the um, the Ethiopian tour, we had to use another airline because they didn't have flights for us locally. Uh, and just remember that, you know, that's you know that's one of those situations. So, uh, you know, but and just so we we also used to just using the, the the Delta Sky Team system where they, you know where they are one of the few airlines that don't give you drama about bags. Uh, they just you know they have the standard the standard. You know, you can, we all spend a lot of money on these tickets, so, and the fact that somebody want to charge you for some more money for bags is ridiculous. But um, this is one of the few situations with the baggage. Yeah, so. And the, the problem is only with that the, 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 the domestic flight mango. Yeah, and I remember when we went to, we went to Brazil, the lady, right. um, the agent that helped us do our ticket, that's one of the things I worked out with her, and she booked it as an international route. But that's what I couldn't get Delta to do because De Delta don't have the the group the, uh, the group uh, booking department at Delta Airlines don't have a setup where they can work with the local airlines like that, like Mango Airlines, and you know, and then add it to where it's part of one booking. But the, but as you remember in, in Brazil, we didn't have any problems with that when we were leaving from oh. uh, Salvador on the way back to Rio de Janeiro. Right. And then you also remember that we didn't have to go get our, our bags, remember? The, the, bags yeah. were, the bags were checked all the way through, which at one point yeah. I, didn't, I, I didn't trust. And I was like, our bags are going to get... I was like, I, don't, I was like... But then I realized, just like I was telling everybody earlier, that whenever you do these things, make sure that it shows that your bag is going to your final destination. If it's not going to your final destination, it will show where the bag is going to be dropped off at, and then you have to go get the bag and then recheck it. So when we deal with South Africa now, in this situation now, we all of us gonna have to go get our bags and recheck it. We fly uh, from Cape Town to Johannesburg and we'll have a nice little short little layover, give us enough time to, to, to go get our bags and recheck them in. And the goal is to find out a way to avoid that, uh, but most of those things I'll have to probably figure out or, or find ways about it once you know, we get there or do the tour itself. It's going to be like from me for, from JFK to Amsterdam and from Amsterdam to Johannesburg. That's yeah, what it's the, going to be? Yeah, exactly. That's uh, you and um, the other six um, people. Um, all of you are going to be leaving from Amsterdam, and everyone's flight goes to Amsterdam. For the final destination at Johannesburg. Uh, yes, Johannesburg, and then I'll come get you guys from the uh, airport and uh, take you to the hotel. And then we're going to spend you know, five days here in Johannesburg, so we have you know we're, we're having enough time to process about our movements and and things like that. And then okay for the Mango Air airline. Ex exactly, and then it's like um, three days after we go to go on the next air, um, airline. Yes, yeah, about next it's about so five days later. Five days. Yeah, we're staying. We're staying five nights in Johannesburg. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, so we have a we have a while, but the only time that the flight connect works in sequence is that when we leave from Cape Town and go to Johannesburg, and then we have to check our bag, you know, get our bags, and then recheck them and and things like that. So, okay, the big difference. Um, first thing, just take less. That's it. Yeah, no, so we can do that, but um, two more things. Yeah, it's a shorter trip, so I don't have much myself either. Yeah, sometimes some people overpack and they don't overuse the stuff. So, I'm just learning to travel light nowadays. Yeah, the best. Yeah, good. So, so, exactly. So, Ja, let me let me mute you, and then I'll get the next call, and then we're gonna close out. Okay. Hi, right, Teresa. You are unmuted. Greetings, Brother Bermani, yes, and fellow family members. Uh, question, are we bringing 
dolls and school supplies to South Africa or not? Uh, yes, um, just uh, seeing what we can get from everyone, uh, just to show some love um, and something light. Um, so I have, I have a host that they're going to select a school or orphanage, and uh, they're going to invite us there to share. Okay, I, I just wanted to be sure that we're doing that. And uh, for people that are leaving from Philadelphia, when we go to Philadelphia, we make sure that our bags are staying in Johannesburg. Yes, exactly. So once you're at the, the counter at the Philadelphia Airport, um, the yeah. agent is going to give you a sticker that's going to say PHL to JNB, and that's guaranteeing that your flight, and it may, it may show the Atlanta as the middle connection, but as long as it's JNB, that means that that is where you're going to pick up your bags, and that's the main thing, family, for all flight, all tours. Um, and that's a tricky one right there um, because... Yeah, so that's why we just recommend everybody do that, and then you'll be all good to go. So I have, I have your I have your sequence set all the way through. You'll meet us here in Atlanta, and um, yeah, you'll show me. You know, okay, so in Atlanta, I don't have to worry about my suitcase at all. No, Notice I said suitcase as opposed to suitcases. <laughs> Family, travel light, travel light. Travel light. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, the only time you have to worry about that is on a return. The return, um, you may, the return is going to be, Atlanta is going to be your, your first destination in, in America. So, um, you know, you, you have to, all bags is going to be in Atlanta, and then your bags have to be rechecked. So only on the return we have to do that. But nevertheless, even on the return or whatever the situation is, we always want to make sure that we're clear because, you know, on the information that's on our boarding pass, a boarding pass size ticket. Okay. Sounds like a plan. 13 days. Peace and blessings. Thank yeah. you. Your Absolutely. family. By the time you turn around, we'll, we'll be there. But, uh, exactly. Uh, looking forward to it. It's a uh, nice getaway. and looking forward to the setting the tone for us. To this build of energy for others who want to come and enjoy, you know, another beautiful tropical experience and, you know, in Africa, it's kind of like what we did uh, when we did uh, Ghana, Togo, Benin. My last time actually doing that long journey. <laughs> but it was a wonderful trip. Some oh, of us enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was, it was incredible. I mean, the, the, I'm talking about logistically. You think about that movement that we did. We're like over here, over there, this country. There. Yeah, we did, a lot of, we did a lot of movement, but it, it was very, it was an impressive trip. I thought so. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, can you actually pull this off? And people ask me, I was like, yeah, we're going to pull it off. And I think, um, I think one site we didn't go to, maybe this is one site, which is incredible, that we were able to do the entire itinerary. But I'll just tell everyone that that's the kind of journey that we do. Uh, you want to make sure you get as much as your money's worth. And on that one, I just thought that was like one of the best journeys where we just got our money's worth. There's three countries and all the education and the knowledge, the experience, and all the people that we connect with. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So this one is unfortunately this one's a little a lot more laid back and it's not much moving around. <laughs> we had like five hotels in that one. <laughs> okay. We're gonna be, we're we'll just, get through it. <laughs> we're just gonna be doing two. Um, but uh, yeah, but yeah, these are the kind of experiences that you know just want to share with the world that we can come together and just experience wonderful things in Africa and also, you know, I have you know I'm looking to share. And uh, there's a lot of wonderful things going on in South Africa that we don't know much about as far as, because there's, there's, you know, there's a nice repatriation energy of, of people from the African diaspora that's doing wonderful things there. And so we're building, we're building for the future. And I um, just you know, appreciate your energy and joining us on this one. Yeah. I'm happy that uh, you had a great time on our last adventure and you're ready for another one. Yes, indeed. All right, excellent. Uh, so let me mute you and see if anybody else have any questions, and then uh, we'll close. Thank you very much. Peace and blessings. All right, so family, um, this was an extended call, but uh, we literally went through that entire list, so I'm hoping that everybody is good for South Africa and uh, Ghana coming up, and then we're going to close out in a beautiful year and then start a brand new year where we do all these tours over again and look to this, invest in our wonderful community energy there in Ghana, our Black Star repatriation and Pan-African community. That's our ultimate investment, so we can move all of our operation from here and just be an African continent and 
just uh, connect with more people and do this at a higher level in Africa. So, so family, all these uh, journeys that we're doing is to build up on that energy where we as a people can just, you know, just have all of the connections and things we need when we decide to do you know, do anything in any of the different countries. So appreciate everyone. Uh, so everyone enjoy your night. And beyond that, uh, anyone who have any questions, want to talk about anything, just reach out to me and we'll connect. So um, family, um, everyone, good night and uh, take care.